Yo, what is poppin' people, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Auto Order, and welcome back to the tutorial series, guys. This is a series where I teach you guys everything you need to know about After Effects. So yeah, we got Trap Club Mirror, guys, and we are gonna be doing a ton of cool stuff with it. And uh, also, before the video starts, I wanna give a big thanks to Simono for sending out these really cool keychains and stickers. Link to them will be in the description down below if you wanna catch your own. I highly recommend getting them. They are just so cool looking, and honestly, you can just stick them on anything. So yeah, if you're interested in some keychains or stickers definitely give Simono a look in the description down below but without further ado guys let's get right on into the tutorial so here I am in After Effects guys as you guys can see I'm using the same clip that I used in the edit at the start of the video so we're just gonna be motion tracking trap code mirror onto it uh, so yeah let's get right into the video guys so the first thing I want to do is make sure your composition has the same resolution and same frame rate as your clips I already pre-composed them here to do that and I already motion tracked it as well but you're gonna want to make sure you have the same settings and then once you do right click on your clip that you want to motion track go to track and stabilize and click on track camera and then it's gonna do the motion tracking for you now you will need stable footage and it can't be shaky it can't be like have any cuts or like and if it has a heads up display from a video game you're kind of screwed so I got the normal clip here which is just the depth or sorry not the depth or just the world layer so I got the world layer here uh, and then I got the gun on its own layer here with key light and uh, if you're wondering how I did this make sure to read the, the description down below for the frequently asked questions but anyway guys once you motion track your clip here by going to the track camera you should get this right here so once you finish motion tracking guys you're gonna get this 3d camera tracker right here in your effects make sure render track points is enabled and make sure you have this button right here selected otherwise you won't be able to like you know click on these points so you have two options here you can either just create the camera and then find a way to position mirror into the you know your edit yourself or you can like click on one of these dots right click and then create null in camera and now what this will do is it'll give you a null object there so you can easily find the position of like something so if you want the mirror to be like right here you can just create a null object and then use the position coordinates on that null so I'm not gonna do the null method guys because I feel like it wouldn't work good in this scenario so I'm just gonna click on create a camera right here which I already did so so that's why there's this 3d camera right here so once you create a camera and you like motion track and everything the next thing you can do is create a new solid so I'm just gonna make a solid right here and I'm gonna pull it up below the gun layer so it, like the mirror doesn't interact with it and uh, you're just gonna want to add trap code mirror on here so I'll just search up mirror and uh, you'll notice it's already created right here that little object right there is it so let me do this maybe this will be easy to see so yeah it's right there so the first thing I did for making that little edit in the intro was I mess around with the position so you're just gonna want to find a way to position it into the scene so this is what I said with a null object earlier if you did create a null you could just press P on the null get the positions from it and then just apply it right here into this position right here so yeah you could do that that is an option but I'm just gonna you know just eyeball it and just place it in the scene like this because you know why not so if we move around here you'll notice it is kind of like in the edit so this is the part where I had it so it was like right here maybe so I'm just gonna mess with the position until I get it right where I want it so like this this looks pretty good and then you can expand you can expand the size right here uh by messing with the size you can unlink them too if you don't want to but uh let's see how this looks right now so this is about what i had in the intro sequence so we're getting there so once you do that you also have these settings right here where you can mess with the repeaters except in this instance it's kind of futile to mess with this stuff because you're not going to really notice much difference because that's more for like other like mirror effects uh I feel like when you're making like terrains like this you don't really need repeaters uh fractal is kind of cool you can offset it and like make the evolution different make it move around and uh you can just really mess with the little fractal settings and like the way like the it's shaped so if you want it to have like really jagged edges or like be really like I don't know if you want it to have a high amplitude on like the fractalness so like like this maybe if you want to go with something like that you can but I'm not gonna mess with fractal settings because like I said I'm not really going for that and uh, material this is the settings you're gonna want to mess with the most so you can try out all these little like presets right here so we'll just pick a random one we'll do chrome I guess or I don't know gold we'll pick the gold preset 
And uh, you can change the color here, so I'm gonna make it like maybe a green, like that maybe. And uh, messing around with these settings until you get like a material that you like. Uh, it's not gonna look good right now because we don't have any 3D lights in our scene. But uh, when you start messing with lighting and stuff, it'll look a lot better. And uh, reflections too, you also got some more stuff you can change here. So if you want like some weird reflections you can you can do that here but uh i'm not gonna do that because like you know like i said i don't really want to but the next thing you also got is you can apply a texture here if you want to so that's cool as well you know but that's not really what i want right now what i do want though is i definitely want ambient occlusion on so if you go to the shader settings right here uh i highly recommend turning on ambient occlusion and then you're just going to want to mess with these settings. My After Effects is a little laggy right now. But you're going to want to mess with the settings until you get something that looks kind of good. So, like, maybe, like, this will look good. So let me put it on full. And this is basically just, like, shading and, like, shadows, you know, stuff like that. Not really shadows, but more of, like, like ambient occlusion. If you, if you know what ambient occlusion is, you know. Yeah, I recommend turning that on because it'll look a lot better. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to rendering and I'm going to turn on depth of field by turning it from off to camera settings. And uh, if you go to your camera settings right here, you have an option to turn on depth of field. So this is without it and this is with it. And then if you don't know much about cameras, I'll probably make a whole nother tutorial talking about like aperture and like stuff like that. But uh, you can like mess with the focal depth and like, you know, the border and stuff like that. So I'm just going to move it like this maybe. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. And uh, we got all our mirror stuff here. You can always add more effects onto the mirrors. Like if you want to like add tint or I don't know, glow or something, you can do that. But uh, this is probably going to make the biggest difference and that's going to add a light. So I'm just going to go to layer at the top, new light. And uh, I'm going to make it a point light. Uh, none of this stuff right here matters. Fall off, I recommend doing inverse squared. You could do smooth, but like, and that's whatever. Inverse squared is a lot more accurate. So you're going to want to do inverse squared, hit OK. And you'll notice the mirror gets a lot darker. So what you're going to want to do now is you're going to want to go to your mirror settings under position right here. You're going to want to copy and paste the position into your point light. So go to your light, press P, go back to your, your mirror, and then just copy and paste all the numbers, the values into here. So just like this. And you'll notice now you're starting to have lighting. Now we're gonna move the light up a little bit more so you can see it. And uh, this looks kind of cool. I feel like the material could use a lot of work here. So we could just mess with these settings more to make it look a lot better. So once you get all your material settings right, you can go into the light settings and you can mess with the options here. You can change the intensity, the radius right here. So I'll make the radius a little bit bigger. Maybe the intensity bigger too. Actually, let's make the radius smaller. So that looks pretty cool right there so if you're wondering how i did the intro sequence it's really simple all i did was duplicate the mirror so click on your solid right here Control c Control v and just duplicate the whole layer go into geometry and then just raise the little y position up so something like this maybe so basically like that that's how i did the little intro sequence and uh, all I did from there was I positioned the keyframes or I keyframed the position. So add the little keyframe icon next to the position. And then as the clip went on like this, what I did was I had the uh, the little roof layer um, come down. So we're going to have it lower like this. And then I guess we could have this one lower as well, maybe like this. So it'll look something like this. So it's going to be animated. As you guys can see, the little, the mirrors are going to move with us. So that's kind of cool, but you don't have to do this. This is just what I did for the edit at the beginning. I just keyframed the Y position value and I just made it like close in on the guy. And then another thing I did is if we go back into this main comp, I'm going to delete these two layers because we don't need them anymore. But uh, if we go into the main comp, another thing I did was I had a trap code shine on as well so if we add shine here uh we could just like i don't know do the same color i did so something like this maybe and then i had the boost light keyframed as well so it starts off with zero and then as the clip goes on the boost light goes up and at the same time the boost light is going up the source opacity is going down 
So that's how we're able to create that effect right there. As you guys can see, it looks pretty similar to what I made in the intro. But uh, yeah, you're just gonna wanna mess with Trap Coat Shine on your little clip here with the mirrors on them. And uh, another thing I also did in the intro is I had a Z-Depth layer, which I didn't add in this video. But uh, yeah, I used the Z-Depth layer to get that like dark background at the back. But uh, that's basically the Trap Coat mirror tutorial, guys. I hope you learned something new. That explains just about everything I did for the intro. Just the, the Trap Coat mirror, the shine, the depth layer. And yeah, so if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment down below what other tutorials I should make, subscribe if you're new guys, I make videos and tutorials for After Effects and all sorts of cool VFX stuff. Also, if you want to buy my editing presets and project files, a link to my editing pack will be in the description down below. Also, I want to give a big thanks to Motion 8 for sponsoring this video. They released a new Mope Pack version 1.5. It's really incredible, so I'll give a little demo right here of what it can do. Now, you guys know that I am personally not a big fan of most people's editing packs. And you guys also know that I would never promote something that I personally didn't enjoy. And this is no different because Mopac 1.5 by Motion Ape is honestly one of, if not the best motion graphic packs out there. A lot of motion graphic packs are either subscription based or extremely overpriced, but for only one cheap payment, you can get access to over a thousand motion graphic templates that you can use in any project for both After Effects and Premiere Pro. These are fully customizable and can work on any resolution. They are also completely responsive with extremely fast render time so you can get anything from titles, lower thirds, overlays, callouts, backgrounds, transitions, color corrections, color gradings, and so much more. Don't waste your time manually making these and save yourself time and money by getting this pack. I myself personally use these templates and graphics from anything from content videos to tutorials and even client work. So this pack will save you countless hours and I highly recommend it. So a link to it will be in the description down below. So be sure to check it out. And yeah, guys, that's the end of the video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all your support. And yeah, guys, I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Peace out.